Now our final objective on this uh, module two is 2.3, which is parallel and perpendicular lessons. Uh, par parallel and perpendicular lines. Now for my class, we actually split this up into two lessons, focused on parallel lines one lesson and perpendicular lines the second lesson. So the main rule for parallel lines is they have the same slope, and for perpendicular lines, they have the negative reciprocal, or as I like you to think about it, the flip and change. You flip the fraction, and then you change the sign of the question. So as we're answering these questions, we need to make sure we're looking for the appropriate words as we're doing this. Now, as this wasn't so clear, I actually picked out these questions again and retyped them so you can see them a little bit better. Once we're given our coordinate, we should label it like we did in the other section, but we have a little bit more work to do. So find the equation of the line parallel to this line. So I know the slope of this line is 3. As it's in slope intercept form, the number with the x tells you the slope. And I know when it says parallel, that means I have the same slope. So in other words, if the slope of this line is 3, the slope parallel is also 3, which is when I come to substitute in why I have a slope of 3. And you can see that I plugged in my other two numbers already. Go ahead and distribute this and then do the opposite of negative one to end up with your final answer. Find the equation of the line parallel to y equals one half x. So once again, another question that involves the word parallel. So I know I'm talking about the same slope for this question. And the slope of this line is one half. As it says y equals one half x, the number with the x will tell us the slope as it's in slope intercept form, which is why I put one half here for the slope. I did, as I was substituting in here, when you subtract negative 2, the two negatives together make a positive, and that's a really important step for this. As we're continuing with this question, oops, I distributed here, I know this is a little difficult to see with this box, but I can't seem to get rid of it, a half times negative 6 is negative 3, and then as I move the 2 across by doing the opposite, you should subtract 2. And negative 3 take away 2 would give you negative 5. For multiple choice questions, at the very least, look at the slope given to you here and see if your answer choice has that same slope. If it does not for a parallel question, you can obviously ignore that answer straight away. Question 3. This time it says perpendicular. I did go ahead and label my point, and I've already started to substitute those in here. So the slope for this question is 1 over 2. As it starts with y equals, the number with the x is the slope. As it says perpendicular, that's supposed to say line here, I'm not quite sure what happened there. We're going to flip the numbers, and then we're going to change the sign. So 1 over 2 becomes negative 2 over 1, and if you simplify that, you'll find it's negative 2. But use your calculator if you're not sure. Once you're here, it's the same as the second unit. Distribute, and move your number to the other side, and negative 8 over 2 gives you negative 6. And we're going to get that same typo here, but we'll ignore that. Perpendicular, I have my equation here. So the slope is 5, that's the number with the x, as long as it starts with y equals. And as it says perpendicular, I know I've got to do that flip and change. Now, if it's not a fraction, it's kind of difficult to flip it in the first place anyway. So put it over 1, kind of like when you do with slope. A slope of 5 means you go up 5 and across 1. So same idea, flip, change the sign. And that's why we have negative one-fifth here as my slope. Just so you can see here, this was negative 10. So when you subtract negative 10, those two negatives together make a positive, which I filled in straight away. And when you distribute, negative one-fifth times 10 is negative 2. And use your fraction button if you are not sure. Add 8 to both sides to finish up. And negative 2 add 8 is 6. And I'm not quite sure why that says 2. I think I must have been copying and pasting there. So this should just be negative one-fifth x plus six. Now, similarly, use that idea to help you on the multiple choice. If you've figured out that the slope of the perpendicular line is negative one-fifth, look at your answer choices. If they don't have a slope of negative one-fifth, as in the x number next to the x is not negative one-fifth, then you know you can go ahead and you can actually ignore that value. Now, the last two questions talk about our lines, parallel, perpendicular, or neither. So basically, you've got to look at the two lines. You've got to figure out the slope. Obviously, if they start with y equals, that's slightly easier to do. And then just go through the order. So if they're parallel, these numbers are the same. Clearly, they're not parallel. They're different numbers. Did we flip and change for this one? Not even close. This one's positive. This one's also positive. So I didn't change the sign. And actually, if I did flip and change 3 over 1, 
I would get negative one over three. So as I didn't flip and change, I know this one is not perpendicular. Therefore, it must be the last choice, and it's neither of those two things. Question six is a little bit more difficult to do. One of them is in slope intercept form, so you can tell the slope straight away for the number of the x. The other one's written in standard form. So, much like you did in unit one, you have to rearrange this before you can say what the slope is. So this is where I want y by itself, so bring the 2x to the other side by doing the opposite. 6 minus 2x is just 6 minus 2x. We get to that point there. And then our last step is, we don't want 3y, we just want y, so divide each term by 3. And then just go ahead and simplify. 3 divided by 3 is 1, so you just get left with 1y or y. 6 divided by 3 is 2, and negative 2 divided by 3 is just negative 2 thirds, so the slope is negative 2 thirds. This time, as we go through the order of questions, are the slopes the same? As the answer is yes, we can stop straight away, and you can say that the slopes are parallel. So make sure you know also the difference between those parallel and perpendicular, because that's going to make a big difference to when you answer these types of questions as to what number do you pick for the slope? Do you pick this number? Or do you have to do that flip and change? And it's important that you don't mix that type of question up because you could clearly pick a lot of wrong answers. And that concludes the video for the third section of the module two test.